So I was debating on whether or not I wanted to film a, uh, an episode for online long range shooting school or film an episode for YouTube. Talking about a rifle when you get it, the things you have to take into consideration if you really want to get it to run to its fullest potentials as well as what you have to do as a shooter. The first thing I want to address when you're talking about a rifle, so this is a 300 PRC. Uh, this is the customers from, from out west getting ready for hunting season. And when you go over and you're building a rifle, or in, in the most important part, I think, for customers is when you're maintaining it. You know, when, when we get any rifle in to do any work, modifications, upgrades, like this stock was bedded now, we go over the rifle from top to bottom, front to back, and it's amazing on all the little things that you find that happen over a short or a longer period of time that can and will cause you a lot of issues as far as your enjoyment with the rifle in the field. So first, uh, my thoughts on the 300 PRC is I think it's a great cartridge. I think with good hand loads, slow burning powders, and I think if you back the speeds off a little bit, it's a very mild recoiling cartridge for the heavy bullets that it's pushing out there. But that said, I want to go over some techniques if you're going to shoot a caliber like this, the things you have to do to get the most from it. So let's talk about the rifle itself. Over time, when we brought the rifle in, the scope cap screws here were loose a little bit. No big deal. The pick rail that's on the actual stock itself, probably when it was installed at McMillan, was only put on finger tight. Um, that needed locked up. No big deal. The actual rings and bases, go overing these, making sure that they're tight. Double checking your pickets any rail. Double checking that your action screws are in at the appropriate weight. And then even the bipod itself had a lot of play and slop in it, one of the ones that we had here shooting. And then one of the rifles that we were actually just bringing out to do some testing on had the customer's brand new bipod on and the top was loose from the bottom. So Todd, if you wouldn't mind, I'll just have you grab one of our Atlas here. So we take it for granted that when we get these things that they're all squared away, ready to go, we shouldn't have to do anything. And it really can't be further from the truth. So the Atlas that we just got in, there's two little screws here that lock this part on to the actual um, bipod portion. When we were getting ready to shoot, you could actually take and you could wiggle this. And that's the second time this year that we found this. So when you open these packages up, we always assume that, oh, it's set from factory, everything should be perfect. I shouldn't really have to do anything. And that can't be anything further from the truth. So on the other rifle, we actually had to tighten these two screws here. And then over time, I just want you to watch these feet here if you get a little bit. Now, I don't know if that's showing up on film or not. Let's swing it around the other way. The reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to show you that you've got now almost a half an inch to an inch of play in this locking mechanism now. And when you're shooting, if you're not super sensitive on how you're shooting the rifle, your hand holds everything else, this becomes part of the problem as well. So I always remind everybody, like anytime you've got a rifle and you're getting it out into the field second, third, or fourth time, anytime you've got a new rifle or a new kit that you're putting on your rifle, go over it, make sure everything is tight and right. And then even after you get it to the field once or twice, re-go over it, make sure things haven't loosened up, especially on your bigger magnums. Things loosen up, the harder they get beat on. And so uh, just these things can cause all kinds of issues in trying to get the most from your rifle. The last thing I want to tell you is when you're shooting these rifles, especially for accuracy, you cannot force them into submission. You actually have to shoot them as if it's a 223. So in order to get this rifle to shoot to its fullest potential, you have to have the discipline to shoot it as if it has no recoil at all. So when we're getting into the rifle, I'm not pushing, I'm not pulling, I'm not gripping harder, I'm not trying harder. I've got a nice firm handshake grip on the rifle. I've got the rifle two to three pounds of pressure on my shoulder. And then when I pull the trigger, I let it come back and unleash all the world of fury on top of me without me doing anything about it. I always say that if you want to get the best from magnums, if you really want to be a magnum shooter, you really do have to shoot it as if it's a 223 or a low recoiling rifle. And that's the mindset you have to approach with it and you have to let it do its job when you pull the trigger. And that's usually unleashing violence on you. And you have to have the mental wherewithal to do that over and over again. So I just thought I would take just a couple minute video to say, look, 
Take a few minutes now and then with newer rifles, go over them front to back, make sure everything is staying tight. If it's a new rifle, go over all of it. Don't assume that your pick rail is tight. Don't assume that your bipod was put together properly. Check all the screws and surfaces. Make sure everything's fit the way it's supposed to be. And it'll save you a lot of heartache with your first or second trip to the range with your new rifle. So I hope this helps, factory, customer, otherwise, it doesn't matter. Take these times, do these things when it's new. Do these things after several range trips. Keep an eye on them. See if anything's causing issues or loosening up. It will play itself out over time that, hey, the rifle's been to the range six, seven times, not had any issues whatsoever. But it doesn't mean I won't go back and check them once in a while until I really get to spend a lot of time with the rifle to make sure that over time, nothing has a tendency to keep loosening up on me. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe. We really appreciate it. Trigger Tech is giving away a trigger on our podcast. So if you want to stop over to the Long Range Shooting Podcast by Wolf Precision, you can register there or you can actually subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to give that away in Thanksgiving and that will be a Trigger Tech trigger of choice. So thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. We're going to post this up on YouTube as well as bonus content for online long range shooting school. See you in the next video.